and welcome to a special edition of the Young, Gifted, and Empowered Awards. I'm Shamika Reed, founder of the Young, Gifted, and Empowered Awards. Today, I want to introduce you to some phenomenal young African-American leaders from Mississippi who are making us Mississippi proud. Six years ago, when we launched Young, Gifted, and Empowered, we did so with the hopes of changing and challenging the narratives of the stories being told about Blacks in Mississippi. Now more than ever, when our voices are trying to be suppressed and our stories are disregarded, it is important that we keep sharing the stories of our strengths, progress, and victories. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. In the next hour of this broadcast, we are shining the light on individuals who are change agents, global leaders, and trailblazers. Thank you for tuning in, and please enjoy the broadcast. We'll be right back after these messages. At Patty Peck Honda, we consider the health and safety of our employees and customers our top priority. We've been closely following CDC guidelines for sanitizing. And throughout the day, we've been cleaning all door handles, desks, phones, and other frequently touched areas around the dealership and service bay. We have also moved our staff to split shifts to avoid having too many people here at once. Stay safe and let us know how we can help in any way. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The Rockefeller Foundation is working tirelessly to get them access to food and benefits. We are also bringing together science, industry, and government to ramp up access to testing so America can return to work safely. This is Shokwe Antar Lumumba, and I want the residents of Jackson to remember that COVID-19 is still a major threat. Please wear your mask, socially distance, and go to the city's website for more information. Thank you. Are you a Black Mississippi resident looking to start your own business and not sure how? Since 2016, Higher Purpose Co. has been empowering Black-owned businesses by supporting the ownership of financial, cultural, and political power. We are a 501c3 economic justice nonprofit with a mission to build community wealth across Mississippi. To learn more about Higher Purpose Co. and how to get involved, go to www.higherpurposeco.org. Get your rear in gear. Come on, Miles. Is couch size a thing? Not in my book. Really putting this new data plan to work. You can do it. I think I pulled a hammy. Hello, this is Shokwe Antar Lumumba, and I just want to express my excitement over the gifted young people that we have in our city. Our city is pregnant with possibilities, and the more that you provide and nurture it, the better it will be. Thank you, and continue your good work. Welcome back. It wasn't in Kenna Pendleton's plan to be an educator. In fact, she thought she would be a news anchor. At the encouragement of her AmeriCorps supervisor, Kiana began to seriously consider a career in education. I was serving through, um, as a tutor, um, through America Reads, and that's through AmeriCorps. And um, my principal at the time, Michelle King, she said, you should try being a teacher. I think you'd be good at it. I did a lot of tutoring with the students and I enjoyed it. And that actually inspired me to pursue education. So I would go to get my um, master's in that. Even with a teacher shortage, it was difficult for the education enthusiast to find a job as a teacher until it was suggested that she meet Cheryl Haynes. Uh, Kiana came to me. Uh for an interview right out of school. I think she had been on a couple of interviews where the principal said that uh, they, you know, didn't want to hire a new teacher. But Kiana was so passionate, so passionate about education. That I knew that she would complete my team. I went to see Cheryl Haynes and she said, I'm gonna give you a chance. I think you are going to be a great teacher. I'm going to actually um, take a chance on you. Kiana just needed a start. And from there, her career soared. Today, the wife and mother of a three-year-old daughter is the head principal at Laurel Magnet School of the Arts. In less than two short years, her innovative, non-conventional, and data-driven approach to education 
has led to the school's first A rating and 100% pass rate for the Mississippi Academic Assessment Program in English Language Arts. When I got there, I took the time to actually build relationships with everyone and get to know them, and in that, you get to know your students and their individual strengths and weaknesses. So um, eventually I groomed my teachers to be able to do that and look at the data to drive everything that we do. Kiana's fun approach to education helps to create memorable moments at her school. With that, the Dead Words funeral, we actually had a funeral where we buried the words. And when you bury the words, you can no longer use them anymore in your writing or in your language. So last year we did the traditional um, Southern Baptist funeral, and this year we did a New Orleans style funeral. In 2019, Kiana was recognized as Administrator of the Year by the Laurel School District, but for Cheryl Haynes, it's not a surprise. Not at all. I saw the potential being that it manifested today. I couldn't be more proud. I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> I couldn't be more proud uh, of her. We have so many memories, professional and personal, and I cherish every one of them. And I look forward to seeing even greater works through her. God bless, and I just love her. Dr. Kiana Pendleton, the 2020 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Educator of the Year. Each year, Target Corporation introduces its Black History Month collection. It includes more than 100 products. Helping lead the charge is Jackson native, the Spencer Walker. He serves as the creative director, which means he leads the concept and product details for the line. So the need was there. We saw and heard our guests and we listened to our guests every day. And if we don't deliver on that, we're leaving them behind and we want to make sure that they feel celebrated, they're included. So target strategy is to always bring everyone together. So this is one piece of that strategy and how we continue to do that is through Black History Month, through the product that we, we sell, but also having moments in the community to, to give back to the community, to align with Martin Luther King holiday and continue that conversation to be inclusive and authentic. Well, Spencer started at Target as an engineer intern in 2009 and was offered a full-time position in 2010. As the senior brand manager for Target, Le Spencer works on the brand management team that oversees the company's brand. In his nine years working for Target, he's earned seven patents. He's traveled the world, collaborating with worldwide partners to achieve Target's goals in product creation and has created 1,000 plus original products for Target stores. The past 10 years have been amazing. Uh, working through furniture, home decor, wall decor, bath products, pillow fort, all the children products I worked on, gives me such immense joy to say that everything that I touch is a piece of me. And what happens is when you create something that is a piece of you and you care so much about, that joy translates over to the individual that buys it and creating those long lasting memories, but also just the, the happiness that you see in a kid's face or a mom's face is what really is what I, I appreciate for all the work that I've done at Target. As a leader, Le Spencer strives to create efficient performance, open ideation, and effective design solutions and fun. You know, when I first talked to uh, Le Spencer about working on Black History Month, he really took the idea and ran with it. I was so impressed with what he brought from the very earliest moments to the table in terms of ideas and concept direction. I literally was blown away um, by how beautiful his presentation was, how clearly he had outlined an amazing vision, and how committed he was to bringing that in, uh, and how committed he was to bringing that vision to fruition. I really feel like he brought amazing leadership skills to the table right from the very beginning. And he's continued to follow through through the past couple of years working on this in a way that just has blown me away. Le Spencer, who values his role as a husband and father of a one-year-old daughter, takes creating products and experiences that will solve a problem and evoke joy seriously. He believes that in life, you either uh, find a way or make a way. And I've been doing that for the rest of my life and I will continue to do that. Uh, being smart about my decisions, but also leading with passion.
LaSpencer Walker, the 2020 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Leader of the Year. We'll be right back after these messages. Get your rear in gear. Come on, Miles. Is couch or size a thing? Not in my book. Really putting this new data plan to work. You can do it. <gasps> I think I pulled a hammy. I'll have a Coke. Is Pepsi okay? Did you just ask if Pepsi a grrr? Excuse me? Of course Pepsi is a grrr. you saying okay? No, no, no. Oh, grrr. What kind of word is that? A coke? A coke? Like this. A What? I wanted a Pepsi. A That's what I'm talking about. Ew. At Patty Pet Condo, we consider the health and safety of our employees and customers our top priority. We've been closely following CDC guidelines for sanitizing. And throughout the day, we've been cleaning all door handles, desks, phones, and other frequently touched areas around the dealership and service bay. We have also moved our staff to split shifts to avoid having too many people here at once. Stay safe and let us know how we can help in any way. Hi, this is Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Just want to take a moment to speak to our young people. Sesame Street, our good friends, have just provided a generous donation to the city, and we're looking forward to putting these materials in your hands. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The Rockefeller Foundation is working tirelessly to get them access to food and benefits. We are also bringing together science, industry, and government to ramp up access to testing so America can return to work safely. Greetings, Jackson. This is Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Excited that it's paving season again. We have some very big projects coming up and we look forward to coming to a neighborhood near you. Welcome back. Greg Johnson lives by a simple life mantra. When you learn, teach. When you get, give. It's the guiding principle that has helped to shape his personal and professional life. Greg is the director of place-based investments and grants at the Rockefeller Foundation. So what does that mean? My work at the Rockefeller Foundation um, is really focused on making sure that low-wage workers across the country um, can access uh, economic stability and the paths to economic mobility. We have two primary ways that we're trying to get that done. One is through policy. The other is through driving private investments into places. Um, on the policy side, our team is focused on expanding earned income tax credits and child tax credits, which obviously have some implication on the amount of money that will go into working families' pockets, not only in the places where we have grants currently deployed, but also in places like Mississippi. Um, our hope is that we can scale that work to be more impactful um, and so that more families can access that money. Before joining the Rockefeller Foundation, Greg was a community organizer and attorney. He worked with the Campaign for Youth Justice as a federal field organizer. In President Barack Obama's administration, as a liaison between the U.S. Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Education on the School Supportive Discipline Initiative, the Department of Justice's Task Force on Violence Against Children, and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, where he served as a member of the Mississippi New Orleans team, managing a portfolio of nearly 140 grants, totaling more than 90 million. Greg's career as a philanthropist is ever evolving. Um, I was in my first year of undergrad. I was working with a statewide racial justice organizing organization, um, and we were winning, right? Um, as nonprofits like to talk about their works, we were achieving outcomes. Um, uh, but I still thought that there was a lot more to do. Um, and I remember telling my best friend, she's still my best friend, Wakenya Clanton, um, our freshman year at Tougaloo College. I said, I'm going to law school, I'm gonna be a dope lawyer, I'm gonna do the impact litigation, but ultimately I'm gonna land at a major foundation and I'm gonna get people the resources they need to do the really hard work of organizing communities to really change things and the outcomes to what they need and want them to be. Well, you know, one of the things that we always say at Tougaloo is that Tougaloo's college success is you really defined by the contributions and investments of our graduates once they leave the institution and how they make their mark on the larger world. Well, Gregory 
not only remained active in the life of Tougaloo College as a loyal alumnus and supporter of the college and investments in the community. He would come back to the college and he would speak, but he also helped to introduce the college to, uh, as he grew in the philanthropic world, to foundations and others, and was talked about Tougaloo College largely. Greg also supports a number of Mississippi and Washington, D.C.-based charitable organizations by providing strategic and financial support. Greg's done a lot in philanthropy, but what he's most proud of... I'm most proud of the little things, um, the little things that I don't have to tell people about, the things that aren't necessarily done through my office. It's the, the phone calls that say, we have 10 spots for kids to do an ACT program, can you help out? And to eagerly answer yes. It is knowing that there are young people who need coats in winter and I can help with that. It's knowing that there are people who are food insecure and I can help with that. Um, so my, my, my giving principles are simple. Um, when you get, you give. When you learn, you teach. Um, and so I try to live every day expressing those values. Greg Johnson, the 2020 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Philanthropist of the Year. Lakeisha Holman grew up in Batesville, and what she experienced was the most symbolic form of country living. Meaning you had to catch a ride, people lived uh, miles apart from each other. But it was very clear that we had something powerful. I shared that one of my great uncles should have been the CEO of Uber. Everybody was always catching a ride with him to, um, to go to Memphis. And I wish he could live, I wish he could live to see some of the things um, that he was doing for the community, and even my great grandparents. To see this now, how empowering it is to be an entrepreneur in a small business owner. A social entrepreneur, speaker, and passionate educator, Dr. Key, as she's often called, is using her country living experiences to revitalize and unify her community. With more than 15 years of experience in education, Lakeisha has been a critical voice and advocate for creating empowering learning and work environments for students and employees. I always knew that I was going to teach. But what I didn't know that it would come a time in my life that I would teach differently, that my classroom would be expanded to entrepreneurship, to wellness and things like that. When I think about my best moments in life, going to Tulum College, number one, and then I always think about my first students, my first five years teaching at the Mississippi Delta. Nothing taught me how to show up as a fully invested black woman in excellence in teaching. In 2016, Lakeisha founded the Village Market ATL. The Village Market is a catalyst that brings national exposure and support to Black-owned businesses through cooperative economics. It features three to four marketplace experiences per year, welcoming a diverse collective of entrepreneurs and small businesses from a variety of states and countries. Lakeisha and her team are intentional about how they engage with businesses of the village. They provide training, financial literacy, and marketplace workshops, mentorship, and a community of like-minded entrepreneurs. Every class that we design for the village market, came from a very curative need within myself. We have mentorship because I need it. We invest in businesses and get grants because I need to get myself when I started. I want to move the starting line forward. When we see businesses succeed that are non black, it's because their starting line was moved miles and miles ahead. But when we think, why am I not there? It's because we're fighting our whole lives to catch up. Lakeisha Holman is a trailblazer and the Village Market is a must-attend shopping experience for vendors and consumers. So what's next? Growth and more growth and more growth. Um, I would love to see us continuously to expand nationally, internationally. I look forward to more entrepreneurs being able to outgrow the Village Market and open up more brick and mortars. But one of my big goals is an everyday location. Entrepreneur Center, where we're empowering entrepreneurs to have everything that they need and be able to scale and sustain no matter where they are. Dr. Lakeisha Holman, the 2020 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Entrepreneur of the Year. We'll be right back after these messages. This is Shokwe Antar Lumumba. 
And I want the residents of Jackson to remember that COVID-19 is still a major threat. Please wear your mask, socially distance, and go to the city's website for more information. Thank you. At Patty Pet Condo, we consider the health and safety of our employees and customers our top priority. We've been closely following CDC guidelines for sanitizing. And throughout the day, we've been cleaning all door handles, desks, phones, and other frequently touched areas around the dealership and service bay. We have also moved our staff to split shifts to avoid having too many people here at once. Stay safe and let us know how we can help in any way. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The Rockefeller Foundation is working tirelessly to get them access to food and benefits. We are also bringing together science, industry, and government to ramp up access to testing so America can return to work safely. Hello, this is Shokwe Antar Lumumba, and I just want to express my excitement over the gifted young people that we have in our city. Our city is pregnant with possibilities, and the more that you provide and nurture it, the better it will be. Thank you, and continue your good work. Want in on a secret? You don't have to pay big bank fees for the convenience you want. At Keesler Federal Credit Union, you get an agile, innovative financial partner that delivers more value and the service you deserve, like free checking accounts that pay you back. No annual fee visa credit cards with rates as low as Prime, the latest technology to simplify your life, and a monthly give back program that rewards people just like you with cash and prizes. Get banking for the next decade from Keesler Federal. That's a good thing. Are you a black Mississippi resident looking to start your own business and not sure how? Since 2016, Higher Purpose Co. has been empowering black-owned businesses by supporting the ownership of financial, cultural, and political power. We are a 501c3 economic justice nonprofit with a mission to build community wealth across Mississippi. To learn more about Higher Purpose Co. and how to get involved, go to www. Higherpurposeco.org. Welcome back. Rukia Lumumba has been around philanthropy and advocacy all her life. Her parents, the late Mayor Shokwe Lumumba and Nubia Lumumba, provided her with her first examples of what it really meant to work as a humanitarian and human rights activist. They really believed in this concept of treating the community as a family and the family as the community. And so they taught me the importance of understanding my role to not only take care of myself and the ones in my household, but to share that wealth, to share my experiences, to share my resources with folks around me because we all need each other. One of my favorite stories of her, her you know, just insistence on fighting for people is when I was a little boy. Uh, I was in trouble for something with my parents, you know, no telling what I had done. And my parents decided that they would discipline me. And my sister, uh, being the committed advocate that she was, stormed in the room and, and chastised my parents and said, you won't beat him anymore, right? <laughs> Rukia continues the Lumumba family's rich history of advancing issues and initiatives that elevate the legal and economic, health and educational rights of individuals, families, and communities. So I do what I do. I do the work focused on racial justice and racial equity because it is central to our existence on this earth. It is central to our ability to live in a civic world, right? a civil world. Right? We see across the world, and especially in the United States, disparities because of the color of your skin and then oftentimes also because of your economic status. Because I want a world where our children are able to live their best lives, regardless of the color of their skin. I want black boys and black girls to have black joy. So there's so many reasons why I do this work, but the main reason I do this work is because I want my children, I want children of the future to be able to live a life of joy, of prosperity, I don't want them to know limits that are oppressive, but limits that help to prepare them for being better human beings on this earth. For more than 18 years, she's worked within and outside the system to foster justice for all, especially as it relates to criminal justice disparities for people of color. She served as director of two of New York State's 
largest criminal justice nonprofits, Center for Alternative Sentencing and Employment Services, and the Center for Community Alternatives, providing visionary leadership and building community and system partnerships to help break the prison pipeline. Um, we had the opportunity to divert 4,200 young people away from incarceration and instead um, allow them to be able to receive supportive services, uh, restorative support inside of a community-centered program and to live at home with their families where they belong. And we saw that over 75% of the young people that engaged in our programs never went to prison, never experienced jail again, and never were charged with another crime. Currently, Rukia is the executive director of the People's Advocacy Institute. So at the People's Advocacy Institute, we believe in this concept that the people, the community is central, not peripheral to community change. And so we engage community members in what we call electoral justice efforts, where we help community members recognize their power and their right to not only be governed, but actually to govern. You know, it's, it's one thing to, to look up to your parents, but when your siblings when, you know, someone who's closer to you in age, you know, demonstrates a larger um, or an understanding, a greater understanding of something more important than themselves, then it's, it, it inspires you. And so Rukia's been an inspiration for me as her little brother for my entire life. Rukia Lumumba, the 2020 Young, Gifted and Empowered Philanthropist of the Year. Dr. Pamela Scott Bracey counts it an honor and privilege to be an educator. It's an opportunity that she doesn't take lightly. It's her life's calling. Well, I knew I wanted to be an educator at a very young age. Um, when I was little, um, instead of dressing dolls and dressing up Barbie dolls, I would get all my stuffed animals and dolls, line them up and play school. I played school with everybody, that's all I did. And my older sisters, they would get tired of me because I would beg them to please play school with me, that's all I ever wanted to do. At the encouragement of her high school teacher, Beth Bridges, Pam pursued her passion to become an educator. I've told Pam a million times, she gives me way too much credit. Pam was a shining star from the get-go. She, by her personality, by her demeanor, the way she was raised, uh, what was instilled in her to, to never sell yourself short, to always do your best. Pam went on to earn a bachelor's from the University of Southern Mississippi, a master's from Mississippi College, and a doctor of philosophy from the University of North Texas, all before she was 30 years old. After spending several years as a video arts teacher at Clinton Junior High School, in 2013, she joined the Department of Instructional Systems and Workforce Development at Mississippi State University, where she also serves as the director and co-founder of MSU's Global Academic Essentials Teacher Institute. I had just gotten a job at Mississippi State. I had only been there three months, and my department chair said, well, here's this big grant. Um, does anybody want to take a stab at it? And I've I knew nothing about grants at that time, nothing about anything because I'm a fresh new professor. And I said, I'll do it. And so in the institute, uh, it's a 22 day institute where the teachers come to Mississippi State for 20 days, consecutive days of training. And it sounds crazy because they're with me from nine to five every day, the entire month of June. But they do get paid um, usually up to $100 per day for coming. And then at the end of the institute, they leave with probably almost $600 worth of instructional materials that they take back to their districts. In 2013 and 2014, Pam was named Mississippi's Outstanding University Business Educator of the Year. In 2017, she was recognized as the Regional Collegiate Educator of the Year by the Southern Business Education Association and received the Mississippi Excellence in Higher Education Award by the Mississippi Association of Educators. Once she makes up her mind to do something, that's it, she goes right ahead on. But she married and she's had, you know, two, now two children, but you know, to be able to juggle all of that and still excel at the level that she has. And um, she, of course she was in Texas getting her doctorate degree and then she came back to Mississippi to teach at Mississippi State. So I'm not surprised that she did it at all. I always knew that, that she, was, she was going to, right to the top. Dr. Pamela Scott Bracey, the 2019 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Educator of the Year. We'll be right back after these messages. 
I'll have a Coke. Is Pepsi okay? Did you just ask if Pepsi a grr? Excuse me? Of course Pepsi is a grr. Just saying okay? No, no, no. A grr. What kind of word is that? A curl? A curl? A curl? Like this. A What? I wanted a Pepsi. A curl? That's what I'm talking about. Ew. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The Rockefeller Foundation is working tirelessly to get them access to food and benefits. We are also bringing together science, industry, and government to ramp up access to testing so America can return to work safely. Hi, this is Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Just want to take a moment to speak to our young people. Sesame Street, our good friends, have just provided a generous donation to the city, and we're looking forward to putting these materials in your hands. Greetings, Jackson. This is Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Excited that it's paving season again. We have some very big projects coming up, and we look forward to coming to a neighborhood near you. Are you a Black Mississippi resident looking to start your own business and not sure how? Since 2016, Higher Purpose Co. has been empowering Black-owned businesses by supporting the ownership of financial, cultural, and political power. We are a 501c3 economic justice nonprofit with a mission to build community wealth across Mississippi. To learn more about Higher Purpose Co. and how to get involved, go to www.higherpurposeco.org. Get your rear in gear. Come on, Miles. Is couch your size a thing? Not in my book. Really putting this new data plan to work. You can do it. <gasps> I think I pulled a hammy. Welcome back. When Tiffany Graves says she became a lawyer to help people, those aren't just words for her. It's literally her life's purpose and passion. Her fight for equity and justice for the underserved began while she was in law school at the University of Virginia School of Law, where she was honored for logging the most pro bono hours of any graduating student. Part of the reason why I wanted to go to law school is because I really wanted to help people. Um, and a lot of people say that as the reason why they go to law school, but really and truly, that's why I went to law school. Immediately before going to, to law school, I worked as an academic counselor with an Upward Bound program. Um, and, you know, if you're not familiar with those programs, you know, you kind of serve as a, you know, a traveling guidance counselor for all intents and purposes to work with, you know, youth who are considered at risk, um, although I never considered the, the students I worked with, um, I never gave them that label, but nevertheless, um, working with them and seeing some of the issues that they faced at home and at school was really one of the things that prompted me um, to consider a career in public interest law. Um, and what I found in law school is how you can get the experiences with kind of helping people is through pro bono work. Her work of helping marginalized and low income individuals continued to expand after marrying her husband James and moving to Mississippi. Tiffany worked with the Mississippi Center for Justice, led the Mississippi Volunteer Lawyers Project and the Mississippi Access to Justice Commission. I've known Tiffany for a number of years professionally. She has been active in pro bono work in Mississippi for several years and was formerly the director of the Mississippi Commission for Access to Justice and before that was the director of the Mississippi Volunteer Lawyers Project. So I had worked with her um, in the, when she was with those organizations helping connect our firm and people who wanted to do pro bono work with people who needed lawyers and her organizations always were very helpful with getting that to happen. Tiffany has received multiple awards and national recognitions for her commitment to pro bono and equalizing the civil justice system. In 2018, she was tapped by law firm Bradley Arant Boat and Cummings LLP as their first ever national pro bono counsel. So a pro bono counsel position is a fairly unique position at a law firm. Uh, and there are actually only now two law firms in Mississippi that even have that position. Uh, and the idea behind it is to have the full-time person who's working within the firm 
to try to get as many people as possible doing pro bono work. Understanding that a law firm is a business uh, and that you know you're there to make profits, but you know as lawyers we also have an obligation to give back to our communities as much as possible. Since Tiffany has joined us in this in this capacity, we've had better partnerships with organizations in our communities that we weren't working with before. So we have offices in Birmingham and Nashville and Tampa and Houston and Dallas and Charlotte and Washington DC and several others in Alabama as well as Jackson. She has been able to reach out to groups that work in those communities that help all kinds of different people. We've seen the percentage of our lawyers who are doing that work increase since she's been here. Um, I don't have numbers for the fourth quarter of 2018, but in the first nine months of 2018, more than 47% of our lawyers did pro bono work, which is a great number. I mean, that's, that's almost half of our lawyers who were in that short time period providing legal services to somebody that needed help who might not have gotten it. And I think a lot of that is due to her. Attorney Graves is making a national impact. She serves on several national boards and is nationally recognized for her pro bono work. We were interviewing a, a law student who is at the same law school that Tiffany went to, which is not even in Mississippi, and this woman is a law student right now who obviously has not been there at the same time Tiffany was in school there, and she knew all about Tiffany. I mean, like, she's famous. And I think that that's because she really brings to this um, a real, a real interest in it and a real desire to do a good job at it that everybody can see and everybody wants to be a part of. Attorney Tiffany Graves, the 2019 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Leader of the Year. Dr. Jarek Rose and Dr. Chandra Minor first met as students while attending dental school at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Fast forward a few years and now the dynamic duo are business partners of Mississippi's only pediatric dentistry and orthodontics office. Um, he's a, a, an awesome Thank businessman. Um, and so he came up with the idea. He approached me, he's like, with pediatric dentistry and orthodontics having such a hand-in-hand -hand relationship, it's like brilliant for us to go into practice together and it, it will provide such a convenience for our patients. Mm -hmm. Being that we, it's two specialties that, like I say, go hand-in-hand, -hand, conveniently located in one place together. Dr. Rose and Dr. Minor are the ultimate entrepreneurs. They work hard, they wake up early, they stay late, they're very compassionate, their patients love them, their employees love them. It's just a, a wonderful relationship that they have. They're business minded, they're very meticulous, very detailed, so that works hand in hand with their businesses. And that's why their practices do so well. They, they're both you know, flourishing and, and really doing well because of how dedicated they are. So they're example entrepreneurs. Historically, only 11% of African-American dental students obtain a specialist. After graduating from UMMT, Dr. Rose then completed an additional two years of specialty training in pediatric dentistry, and Dr. Minor was accepted into the postdoctor orthodontic residency program at Howard University. In my specialty, the specialty is behavioral management, um, special needs children, special needs adults. So the specialty is more with uh, the patient itself and not the procedure. So with my specialty, I was able to find a way to specialize and at the same time still be able to do everything that I learned. Um, so that's why I chose pediatrics. It was the most fulfilling part of dentistry that I learned during my time there at the school. Upon returning to Mississippi, Dr. Minor made history as the state's first and only African-American female orthodontist. I was interested in orthodontics, but I didn't think, um, you know, I just, thought it would be too much to go more into uh, another two years of school. Uh, some of my faculty members there had made me aware of the first African-American orthodontist in the state who uh, was Dr. Theodore Jones. He was still practicing at the time and so I shadowed him. I didn't know that there were no other um, like, uh, female orthodontists here in the state so I shadowed him some and then the, some of my faculty instructors in, encouraged me to go into orthodontics. I applied and then I was accepted, so at the time it was um, just a, an interest. I didn't realize that it would, I would be making history at the time. Dr. Rose and Dr. Minor literally built their business from the ground up and now have served more than 16,000 patients since opening their doors four years ago. So 
What's next for the Savvy Business Partners? Expansion? Yeah, expansion. expansion. So, <laughs> Even though we talk about how tired <laughs> we are and how much work it requires, it's, it's still that drive in you that's like, yeah, yeah we, we got this, we can do this, and we're ready to take on more. Dr. Jarek Rhodes and Dr. Chandra Miner, the 2019 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Entrepreneurs of the Year. We'll be right back after these messages. Are you a Black Mississippi resident looking to start your own business and not sure how? Since 2016, Higher Purpose Co. has been empowering Black-owned businesses by supporting the ownership of financial, cultural, and political power. We are a 501c3 economic justice nonprofit with a mission to build community wealth across Mississippi. To learn more about Higher Purpose Co. and how to get involved, go to www.higherpurposeco.org. I love Coke. Is Pepsi okay? Did you just ask if Pepsi a okay? Excuse me? Of course Pepsi is a okay. Did you say okay? No, no, no. Okay. What kind of word is that? Okay. 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 Like this. What? I wanted a Pepsi. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Ew. Get your rear in gear. Come on, Miles. Is couch or size a thing? Not in my book. Really putting this new data plan to work. You can do it! <gasps> I think I pulled a hammy. Want in on a secret? You don't have to pay big bank fees for the convenience you want. At Keesler Federal Credit Union, you get an agile, innovative financial partner that delivers more value and the service you deserve, like free checking accounts that pay you back. No annual fee visa credit cards with rates as low as Prime, the latest technology to simplify your life, and a monthly give back program that rewards people just like you with cash and prizes. Get banking for the next decade from Keesler Federal. That's a good thing. At Patty Peck Honda, we consider the health and safety of our employees and customers our top priority. We've been closely following CDC guidelines for sanitizing. And throughout the day, we've been cleaning all door handles, desks, phones, and other frequently touched areas around the dealership and service bay. We have also moved our staff to split shifts to avoid having too many people here at once. Stay safe and let us know how we can help in any way. This is Shokwe Antar Lumumba, and I want the residents of Jackson to remember that COVID-19 is still a major threat. Please wear your mask, socially distance, and go to the city's website for more information. Thank you. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The Rockefeller Foundation is working tirelessly to get them access to food and benefits. We are also bringing together science, industry, and government to ramp up access to testing so America can return to work safely. Welcome back. It was only five years ago when Rita Brent performed her first comedy act. She took the stage surrounded by family and friends and while she didn't think it was a great performance, something special happened that night. For the most of my life, I've been a musician and uh, an, an academic. And then, out of the blue, I was at an open mic at this place called Sweet 106. People from Jackson might be familiar with it. I was at the open mic, and there were some guys there doing comedy. And I started getting chills, and the hair on my arms started rising. I said, what's happening? And I swear, God spoke to me. He sounded like Barry White, and he was like, you can do this. I was like, whoa, God. Whoa! So, uh, two weeks later, I was on stage doing stand-up comedy. I did a five-minute set that night, and I think I got paid $25. And I was like, well, this is just another stream of income to help me pay off my student loans. So, I just decided to take it seriously five years ago. One of Rita's biggest supporters has been her mother, Angela, who says she wasn't surprised by Rita's decision to become a comedian. Well, I was surprised, and then I wasn't surprised because she's always been funny. And then I'm funny, people don't know that I'm funny, but I'm funny, so she came up around a lot of comedy. Her grandmother is funny. She, she has a very special relationship with her grandmother. And a lot of the things that her grandmother says, is, it's all funny, you know, so I was surprised and then I wasn't surprised because again, I was leaning on the drums or the music part of it. 
Since then, Rita has made great strides in the entertainment industry. She has shared the stage with some of the biggest names in stand-up comedy, including Ricky Smiley, Kevin Hart, and the late Dick Gregory. In 2016, she met comedian and radio personality Ricky Smiley, and he took her under his wings as a mentee. She often tours with him on the Ricky Smiley and Friends tour. So what was it about, what was it about her that made me want to give her a chance? She's humble, she's funny, she's professional, she's a Sara, uh, and, and, and she's lovable and cute, and I just absolutely love her. As a matter of fact, we spend time together, we go out on the boat, we really kick it. So I love her, and she's one of my favorite Sara ever. And uh, I just absolutely love her, uh, you know, so I add her to my little sister list. So that's what it is about her, because she's really sweet, and she a drummer, because I'm taking drum lessons now, so I'm trying to be just as good at drumming as her, so maybe she could teach me some lessons or whatever, but I'm really proud of her, and I'm uh, glad to be working with her. Summer 2017, Rita decided to bet on herself and become a full-time comedian. Soon thereafter met comedy mogul Kevin Hart. She was featured on Heart of the City, filmed True TV's Laugh Mob, Laugh Tracks, awarded first runner-up in the American Black Film Festival's Comedy Wings competition, performed at the Essence Festival 2018 as a main stage act, and the Just For Last Festival in Montreal, Canada. If I wanted to just look at her right now, I would just tell her how much I love her and how grateful I am for her journey. I would tell her to always remember her journey and share her journey as she goes higher because just like somebody's journey helped her, her journey is gonna help somebody. Comedian Rita Brent, the 2019 Young, Gifted, and Empowered Artist of the Year. Demario, his wife Tamala, and their family strive daily to live lives that are pleasing to God and are based on the Acts 2035 Bible verse. It is more blessed to give than receive. DeMario grew up in Brandon, Mississippi, attended Arkansas State, and was drafted into the NFL by the New York Jets in 2012. Sharing his faith, giving back, and helping his community was something that was always close to his heart, but he wanted to do it in the right way. That was something that was always on my heart. Like, I wanted to help in my community. I wanted to help where I came up, and, but I wanted to do it the right way. You know, I wanted to move in an efficient and effective way, so, I didn't want to just, you know, try to throw a whole bunch of dollars at something. And I had saw people who had foundations and they kind of thrown it away. DeMario has contributed more than $100,000 in establishing and staffing the Pearls for Girls Foundation, helps strengthen the partnership between United Way and NFL players, supports the salaries of five full-time missionaries, and hosts summer enrichment camps for Mission First. He and his wife, Tamala, traveled the country speaking and hosting conferences about godly marriages and are the founders of the Devoted Dreamers Foundation that helps to equip youth spiritually, mentally, and financially. He is also very involved in the Players Coalition, a nonprofit that focuses on criminal justice reform and social and racial equality. But Demario didn't want to do a football camp. He didn't want to come every summer and just do a football camp. He wanted to do something much more than that. So when we sat down and we talked to DeMario, his biggest thing was reading and doing something money management. He, he knew the importance of reading. He knew the importance of money management. So what we started out doing on every Friday for seven weeks, um, probably three or four times out of those seven times, DeMario, when he was in New York or when he was in Cleveland, he would actually fly down uh, every like Friday and spend the whole day um, with us and then fly back. But his emphasis was on reading. And so we want to focus on that for kids. We feel like for them to achieve their dreams, number one, they got to be great people. And so we want to focus on the character. And um, I'm a little biased, but I think that believers are usually the best people, especially people who believe and try to live it out. You know, and so uh, we try to focus on creating better people through the gospel. Uh, we focus on creating more well-rounded individuals, how they perform in the classroom. So we focus on reading comprehension, financial literacy. And then we focus on the physical, which is uh, more so all-encompassing about eating right, being fit, exercising an hour a day, and things like that, versus being specific to a, a skill or a trade. DeMario now plays for the New Orleans Saints. He's often described by his teammates, coaches, and administrators as a leader on and off the field. 
while his philanthropic work is near and dear to him, what's most important to him is building the kingdom of God. I hope that my life reflects Jesus Christ. You know, it's like, I don't want people to remember my life. I don't want them to see me other than that this guy was passionate about following Jesus Christ. You know, because that's my whole life is like, I'm trying to, people, I want people to follow me as I follow Christ. It's like, so I want you to see, um, I don't have anything to give you personally, but I have a savior who can give you everything as he's given me the world. And that's what I want people to see. And so like, I want my life to be a reflection of him. You know, if my life does not reflect Jesus Christ, then I'm a failure. You know, it's like when I, when I go through those gates, all I want to hear is well done, my good and faithful servant. Demario Davis, the 2019 Young, Gifted and Empowered Philanthropist of the Year. We'll be right back after these messages. At Patty Peck Honda, we consider the health and safety of our employees and customers our top priority. We've been closely following CDC guidelines for sanitizing. And throughout the day, we've been cleaning all door handles, desks, phones, and other frequently touched areas around the dealership and service bay. We have also moved our staff to split shifts to avoid having too many people here at once. Stay safe and let us know how we can help in any way. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table. The Rockefeller Foundation is working tirelessly to get them access to food and benefits. We are also bringing together science, industry, and government to ramp up access to testing so America can return to work safely. Hello, this is Shokwe Antar Lumumba, and I just want to express my excitement over the gifted young people that we have in our city. Our city is pregnant with possibilities, and the more that you provide and nurture it, the better it will be. Thank you, and continue your good work. Are you a black Mississippi resident looking to start your own business and not sure how? Since 2016, Higher Purpose Co. has been empowering Black-owned businesses by supporting the ownership of financial, cultural, and political power. We are a 501c3 economic justice nonprofit with a mission to build community wealth across Mississippi. To learn more about Higher Purpose Co. and how to get involved, go to www. Get your rear in gear. Come on, Miles. Is couch size a thing? Not in my book. Really putting this new data plan to work. You can do it! <gasps> I think I pulled a hammy. Welcome back. While we've made significant strides in our community, the fight for civic and economic equality continues. Let us not forget that Breonna Taylor's murderers have yet to be arrested. George Floyd was murdered in broad daylight by those sworn to protect and serve us. And both systemic and blatant racism is at an all time high. That is why it is important that I remind you that October 5th is the deadline to register to vote in Mississippi for the November 3rd elections. Make your voice heard. Vote like never before. It is our hope that today's broadcast not only makes you proud, but also encourages you to dream big, courageous dreams for your lives. If you would like more information about Young, Gifted, and Empowered, please visit our website at www.younggiftedandempowered.com or connect with us on social media at Young, Gifted, and Empowered. Until next time, may God bless each of you. Thank you.